Hey guys, this is Amin from Falcon Notes, and today we're back at it with another video tutorial for a Notion template. And today we have the Medical Research Project Accelerator. And I'm very excited about this. We're excited about this. I think this is a template that has a lot of potential for um, many medical students, even residents and attendings, who are really just trying to get ahead of their research projects and find a system that works for them. So number one, why use Notion for this? Um, to start off, medical research is the bane of many medical students, and often it's because of the difficulties of organizing and tracking and collaborating on these research projects. And right now, a lot of people literally just bounce between email threads and Google Docs and Dropbox and random texts and notes on their phone to kind of figure out what the, what's going on with their research project, who has to do what. And uh, it just becomes a... It, it just that annoyance is uh, really a hindrance to actually progressing on their research projects and even mentally, psychologically creates a barrier for them to, to even do more research uh, and even get those projects done. So when you have a streamlined system to efficiently carry out your research, doing these projects actually becomes fulfilling and enjoyable and uh, the more you see you can get research projects across the finish line, it really makes you actually see the value in doing research. Um, not to mention, research is becoming more and more important to set yourself apart as a medical student, as a resident. Um, even even uh, pre-medical students, a lot of them are doing more and more research. So it's pretty crucial to have a system that works for you. Our Notion template simplifies the process for you. We have a template that works very, very well. Uh, you don't have to waste time on learning how to use Notion, figuring out how to optimize the template specifically for you. And essentially you can plug and chug all of your information and basically hit the ground running once you download this template. So here's what the template looks like. As you can see, this is basically a table of contents of all the different parts of the page. And then here I have a tutorial that goes over a lot of what I'm going to go over in this video. But here it is in text form if you guys would like. Here's the mobile-friendly research dashboard, which we'll go over. And then just a quick overview. Here's a project dashboard with all the projects. Here's a project to-do list with all of your tasks. And then... Here you have an organizer for your abstracts and presentations. Here you have a, a section just for brainstorming. And then here you have a section for previous publications and presentations. And this basically serves as a living CV. So going through the databases, number one, uh, the research projects database. There's, there's four databases total. The first one is a research projects database. And this is the most important one. This is where all of your projects are going to live. And... Uh, all of the projects have their own landing pages. Uh, every single project can be classified based off a number of different things, tags, what subject are they in, what kind of study type, what abstracts and presentations are they linked to. Remember, this arrow in Notion means always that it's linked to another database, right? So this project, Eurogenital Injuries, this is linked to a presentation, um, which is which shows up basically in this abstract and presentations database. And then you have uh, it also directly linked to project to-dos. And then you have notes that you can do, uh, authors that are collaborating, target submission date, you have all of this stuff. And then if you click on any of these pages, you find the actual landing page for uh, the project. So like I said, you have all of this information here. And then the project tasks, which are linked to the dedicated research task database, are automatically automatically show up here and are linked, right? So I can immediately add a new task and this will um, show up in the research tax database and it automatically will be linked to this project that I'm working on currently. Now we've actually broken up the each page um, for your research project, depending on whether it's a review, whether it's a retrospective project or whether it's a prospective project. So what you can do, and I'll show you guys this when I actually go and start my own project and open up a new template, uh, but we basically break it down into three different parts, the planning stage um, and any other information relative to the background information, the research question, who the authors are. If there's any notes from any meetings, you can put that put those notes over here. Um, and then the execution. So because this is a review, you know, it's related to the search criteria, the literature review, data collection, et cetera, et cetera. And then the lastly, uh, you have the write-up and submission. Here's where you actually have the abstract, the manuscript outline. You can actually go in here and open this up and break down methods and materials into the specific sections that you want to write about. 
And if you want, actually, you can even use Notion as your uh, editing and writing software. It's a it has a pretty robust system uh, where you can you can put comments, you can see you can track changes, you can see who's doing who's who wrote what. You can mention someone within a comment, um, and uh, basically, it's it's pretty useful in that regard. So. Um, that this is where you're going to write the actual manuscript. You can put figures and tables here. You can put target journals. And then uh, over here in the general information, you can actually also link to cloud storage. So uh, obviously you're going to have data. Um, you can store it on Notion, but honestly, it's better to link it to Notion. So you can keep uh, a folder within a cloud storage. And then uh, that's, that folder can have data that you can't put on Notion, such as uh, patient data or, or statistics or uh, even if you want to do the manuscript on uh, Google Docs, for example, you can link all of that, um, the general folder here. And then at any point, if you want to link the manuscript outline um, here, then uh, then you can certainly do that. So that's basically the research projects. And this can be organized in several different ways right here. Um, I have it organized by status. So this is uh, return for revisions. You have writing manuscript, data collection in progress, waiting for author edits. And then you can go back as far as anticipated projects or projects that have not yet been started. Now, moving along to the research tasks. So the research tasks database has all the different to do's for all the different projects that you are currently involved with. So as you can see, each task will be directly linked to one of these projects. So this task right here is linked to the urogenital injuries, right? Um, and then you can add other information such as due date, such as who it's assigned to. Um, and then if you actually open up these pages, you can put specific information uh, relative to this task. So that might be helpful in your planning as well. Uh, you can also have subtasks uh, within basically a parent task that's another option if you if you would like to make use of that function and then basically just with anything in notion you can see in several different views so this database can be viewed within a calendar format um, so right here you know i can actually drag and drop uh, research tasks and then real quickly uh, i, I want to show you the easy task scheduler and assigner i think this is very useful so right here i have all the tasks that are not yet done um, and what you can do is you can uh, literally assign uh, assign people tasks just by dragging and dropping. So all of these tasks, for example, this one is not assigned to a person. I can literally drag it over here, put it under Chima, and it's immediately assigned to him. Similarly, this doesn't have this right here doesn't have a due date, right? This one has a due date. This one has a due date. This does not have a due date. What I can do is I can literally go to the calendar and just put it right there and it's assigned a due date immediately, right? So this is just a very easy way. This is one of my favorite parts about this template is that you can uh, literally just drag and drop and it just makes assigning and scheduling so easy instead of going into the settings, assigning, etc. cetera. Uh, it, it makes it a lot easier. Moving on to the next database, this is the abstracts and presentations. Uh, so I think this is also a very useful feature where uh, when you're submitting to conferences and uh, different sort of research meetings, you kind of lose track of which conferences, when the submissions are due, when the date of the submission is, what kind of submissions do you want for that uh, for, for that conference. So, you know, you can put podium presentation, but let's say you're submitting two projects, you can put podium and poster presentation, and you can even put multiple um, research projects for each research conference, right? So uh, you can kind of keep track of all of that here. Moving forward, uh, this is the research ideas database, and that's exactly what it sounds like. It's just a space for you to basically brainstorm. You can put miscellaneous notes, research collaborators. Uh, we want to keep it open for you to kind of figure out and configure uh, as you like. And you can even open this up and then put more ideas, et cetera, et cetera. Um, put some studies maybe that you think are relevant. Um, and the, basically just use this as a space to plan out your uh your work or a future study. Lastly, this is basically, this section is just everything that you've previously published and previously presented. Uh, and it basically serves as a living CV. So when the time comes to submit your ERAS application or basically update your CV, you can go here immediately and you can see all of the research projects that you've published. You can even include a citation or a publication link. And then you can include all the presentations you've done 
for uh, all these specific projects. And those will show up as well. So um, this is really just a good way to organize all that information. Now, um, one other thing I want to uh, go through before we actually put in a new project and show you how the process looks. We have a mobile friendly research dashboard. So let's say so let's say you're on your phone quickly and you just want to look at your tasks that are assigned to you and your recent projects. You can do that without looking at, you know, anything else. So this is basically just a quick view of your research tasks and then your research projects, the, the most recent ones that you're uh, that, that you uh, have been working on. So now, now that we've done all of that, let's actually go ahead and put in our own research project, okay? So uh, what you'll do is you'll go ahead and click this button. You won't hit new right there, but you'll actually hit this button. And let's say I am doing a new retrospective project. So I'm going to hit this, and uh, here it is. I'll go ahead and um, even choose an icon for it. Let's just do... Um, broccoli. Okay, let's say um, roll of broccoli in for tension. Is that how you spell broccoli? There you go. Okay, so this is an anti. Let's let's change this to in progress for tags. Let's put um, cardiology. Let's put um, nutrition. And um, this is a retrospective chart review. The authors, I'll put myself. And um, right here, I don't have any. Uh, let's say I want to present this actually at the Michigan, um, the Midwest, uh, or the Wayne State Pediatric Research Day target submission date. And let's do August 16th. And then link to iCloud storage. Let's say I made a folder on Google Drive. I'm just going to link it like that. And then let's say I want to collaborate with um, one of my co-authors on this. I, I can actually go ahead and share this, add the person here. And once I've done that and I've given them ability to edit this page, they're now going to have access to this research project. However, they're not going to have access to anything else within my research uh, project accelerator. So this is a very unique way to be able to collaborate on a specific research project, but also use it within your larger system that organizes all your different research projects. So I think that's something that's very, very useful. Um, here, let me add a project to do. Um, I'm going to create a page. I'm going to say do, um, do literature review so i'm going to add this right here research task and now here it is and then let's say uh that i want to assign this i'm going to assign this to myself and i'm going to say the due date is going to be tomorrow so i'll, I'll go back okay now uh here you have the planning and let's say you have the different authors and you can put these in order you can say a mean you can say Gma, you can say Falcon, and you know you can arrange them, rearrange them as you like. Uh, and this is actually a good way also, um, sometimes when you're putting together a research project, you don't finalize who the what the authorship order is until you've actually started writing. And that can create problems because people feel that earlier on they did more work. So this kind of shows you a live authorship order um, and that's going to be available for everyone to see. There's no confusion or anything about it. The, the research question, I can put a research question. How does broccoli consumption in um, adults with hypertension um, impact their blood pressure? So how does broccoli consumption in adults with hypertension impact their blood pressure? I can put some specific aims right here, put some background information on the subject. Literature review, um, basically put in some studies that have already been done on the topic, similar review papers. Um, basically just put a, a timeline for when I want it to be done. So finish review next week, um, six 23 and then i can actually take meeting minutes so let's say i meet with my colleagues i can put new meeting and immediately 
I get this. Let's say this was 6623. Present Amin Falcon Notes YouTube Audience. Okay. Notes um, ASDF. ASDF. Wonderful tasks. So I can actually put in a task here and then the task will actually um, automatically populate within the research database. So I can open it right here and then immediately I can say um, read similar paper in Genoma and go back. So that task has been done. And as you can see, it shows up right here too. Everything is connected. And then here's a space for data extraction, data collection, statistical analysis. And then I have the manuscript outline. Can I, I can start putting a brief outline for the introduction. Uh, I can put some information on target journals, write up an abstract. And um, that's pretty much it. And then let's say the last thing is how can I use the easy task schedule and assigner. So I click on that right here. Uh, so I see all the tasks related to role of broccoli. So let's say read the similar paper in JAMA I want to uh, assign to Abdul. I can do that here. And then let's say that same task I just assigned to him. I want to put the due date for the 8th. I can do that. Oops, actually let go. Um, I, can, I can go ahead and put the due date for tomorrow right here. And then just to make sure it's assigned to him, go like that. See, it stays here and it's assigned to him works perfectly. And that's pretty much it. That's uh, basically an overview for how it works. And then you can go ahead and use this page to however degree works best for you. So you can customize it further. You can get rid of things that you don't need and uh, really just use it to your advantage. See what works best for you and customize it as you see fit. With that said, we wish you the best of luck with your research projects. If you have any questions, feel free to us through the website, and uh, we hope this uh, this helps. Thank you. Bye.